Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, in this module we're going to do today, we're going to talk about energy losses in a vehicle's engine. To get us started, we'll navigate to the module. Um, on the left side here, you can go to Fundamentals eLearning, or you could do it through the center folder also. But Fundamentals eLearning, we're going to go down to Day 10, and then you're going to see energy losses right here. So let's get started. Now, as it talks about losses, it says combustion engines convert chemical energy, known as fuel, and it could be gasoline, diesel, kerosene, jet fuel, into mechanical energy. Electric motors convert electrical energy into motion. In both conversions, losses occur. In combustion engines, there are radiation losses, cooling losses, exhaust losses, and mechanical losses. So a bunch of different ways that we're losing uh, energy here. In an electric motor, there are electrical losses and mechanical losses. So as you already see, um, the electric motor has far fewer things that cause it to lose efficiency. And what kind of energy is fuel? Well, right here it says fuel is turned is a chemical energy. And we take that chemical energy and we turn it into mechanical energy. We'll go to number two. Which useful energy conversion takes place in a combustion engine? Well, in a combustion engine, we're taking chemical energy and turning it into mechanical energy. So that's going to be the second one. And we'll go to number three. Which losses occur in a combustion engine? So all of these things right here are losses that we incur as part of making our power. So we've got radiation losses. Um, we don't have electrical losses, but we do have cooling losses right here. Uh, we do have exhaust system losses, and we've also got mechanical losses. And the question is, what percentage of the energy is useful? So if we look at our diagram up here, we're going to see that only 35% of our energy is actually effective in creating our power. So that's going to be 35, which is 35%, which I think we'll all agree is not very good. And if we look at it from the other direction, what percentage of the energy is lost? That's going to be all of these guys right here. And that's going to add up to 65% if my math is right. There we go. So we're losing 65% of our efficiency through all of these means right here. We'll go to number six now. Which useful energy conversion takes place in an electric motor? Um, in the electric motor, we have electrical energy into motion. So we got electrical energy is turned into motion or the moving of the wheels. Now we'll go to number seven. Which losses occur in an electric motor? Well, if we look at these right here, we've only got two main losses that are taking place, and that's why our electric cars are turning out to be so much more efficient. Um, we don't have radiation losses. Um, we do have some electrical loss in the motor. Because we don't have exhaust, we're not going to have any exhaust losses, and we are going to have some mechanical losses due to our mechanical moving parts. So only two things, not bad. Then we'll go to number eight. What percentage of the energy is useful? Now check this out. This time around, instead of being 35% like it was before, it's actually 90% being used. And that's why these electric cars are turning out to be so incredible. Love them or hate them, they are incredibly efficient. So 90%. We'll go to number nine. What percent of the energy is lost? Well, if we look at it this way, seven plus three, we're losing about 10%. So 10% loss, not bad at all. We're always going to lose some, but that's pretty minimal. So that's it, a short, simple module. But what you want to think about are what are the differences between a typical combustion engine and an electric motor, and why is this setup becoming so popular? And it's just right here. They're just so much more effective, um, and we're just not wasting a lot um, in driving them. So we'll hit bullet point 10 here, finish things up. All right, nice job getting that done, and talk to you guys later.